Good morning and welcome to Karen Reads, another in the series of books for kids, read by me, Karen Lee, from my living room here in South Berwick. Today's book is called Float Like a Butterfly. It's a true story of Muhammad Ali, the heavyweight champion boxer. It's written by Natsaki Shangi, who's written many different things, plays and books and poetry and novels. She was named the heavyweight poetry champion of 1992, 93, and 94. It's illustrated by Edel Rodriguez, who won awards for his illustrations and lives in New Jersey. I will read to you more about the author at the end of the book where she um, writes something directly to you about Muhammad Ali and the time that she got to meet him in person. Now it's a little confusing because his name was Cassius Clay when he was younger and then he changed it to Muhammad Ali. So we'll read about that. He was Cassius Clay, born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. As a boy, he struggled to make his way in the segregated world of the pre-Civil Rights South. You can notice that the water fountains are segregated. One is marked colored and one is marked white. Cassius believed in a colored Superman. Mama, I don't tell stories. I tell the truth. If there's a white Superman, then there's got to be a colored one. Makes common sense to me. He loved the power of words. Cassius, without you to help me with the rhymes, I wouldn't have the best-selling signs in town, said Pa. Come on in for a shave and a trim. That's nothing, Pa. I can rhyme all the time, said Cassius. things were hard for his people. His parents helped him see a different way. Mama, is heaven divided up like Louisville with white and colored? And are the Negroes in heaven poor like the ones living in Smoketown? Oh baby, the Lord loves all his children. It's people what mess up what the Lord's work is. So long as you are alive, I want you to remember you are God's work. Most of all, Cassius knew that freedom was worth fighting for. And to Cassius, when he was a boy, Freedom was a brand new bike. Somebody stole my bike and I'm gonna whoop them good. I'm gonna have to be the best fighter there is 
because nobody's going to take nothing else from me and mine. I tell you true now, I may not be the college superman, but I'm going to have fists that fly, that's for sure. And you know what else? I'm going to be the greatest boxer of all time. You hear me? I'm going to be the greatest. Early on, Cassius developed his famous style. Lightning quick on his toes, brave, cool, and disciplined. He would duck and bob his way around the ring, exhausting his opponent, waiting to strike. The hard work began to pay off. Cassius won the gold medal at the 1960 Olympics. He was just 18 years old. He believed in excellence. Four years later, Cassius Clay became the heavyweight champion of the world in a bout against Sonny Liston. Clay had come into his own. He embraced Islam as his new faith and took a new name, Muhammad Ali. In 1965, he fought Liston again, knocking him out in just one round to retain his title. Then the title he had worked so hard for was stripped away because he refused to fight in Vietnam. A deeply religious man, he believed in equal rights for all people and he believed in peace. When it came to fighting, he knew he was good. I'm Muhammad Ali. I float like a butterfly and I sting like a bee. There's nobody bigger or better than me using his words again. But in 1971, Ali suffered a tremendous defeat to Joe Frazier in the fight of the century. He, he didn't give up. Three years later, after intense training, he regained the title of heavyweight champion of the world in eight brutal rounds against George Foreman in Zaire in what became known as the Rumble in the Jungle. He believed in perseverance. Three years is a long time to train. Inside the ring and out, Ali fought for all he believed in and won. Now he donates his time, his money, and himself to children around the world. He believes in generosity. He is a hero for all time. The writer of the book says, When I first met Muhammad Ali, I was just a child. I believed in heroes. I believed in him. What struck me most were his hands. They were bigger than my father's hands, even bigger than my grandfather's hands that were shaped like large gourds, gourds from years and years of farming. But even the size of Ali's hands 
wasn't as astonishing as his very person. With me, he was soft-spoken and gentle. At a time when some black people were afraid to look white people in the eye, I knew that Muhammad Ali looked white, looked white folks straight in the face and dare them to say anything about how pretty he was, how invincible and independent. Some wanted to diminish him and call him Cassius Clay, even though he had announced to the whole world that he was now Muhammad Ali. I was proud when he took up the Nation of Islam and refused to fight in Vietnam. In a time when no one else was protesting the war, Muhammad Ali took a stand. As a result, his boxing license was revoked without due process or a hearing. While his lawyers appealed his case, he struggled without a way to make a living. Dr. King was virtually the only public figure to openly support his decision. Then the Supreme Court unanimously overturned the ruling. Muhammad Ali gave me hope and courage. He still does. Okay, great book. Thanks for being with me. Till next time, bye-bye.